متسلیم یا علیہ سیدنا محمد خاتم الانبیاء و امام مرسلین و علیہ و صحبہ و سلم سلیم اکثیرا نویت تعلم و تعلیم و تعذکر و تذکیر و نفع و الانتفاع و الافادہ و الاستفادہ و الحثہ علی تمسوکی بکتاب اللہ و بسنت رسوله صلی اللہ علیہ و علیہ و صحبہ و سلم و دعا الى الہدا و دلالت على الخیر و ابتغاء وجه اللہ و مرضاته و قربه و ثوابه سبحانه و تعالی و بعد رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی عمری و حل لقتتا من لیسانی یفقه قولی و بعد السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ انشاءاللہ the topic today that we will be discussing is the topic of bid'a in Islam bid'a is a word which has been used very openly in this era by specific groups, by people on social media. Every single act nowadays is addressed as a bid'ah and people are told to leave the ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala under the false context of bid'ah. So today, inshallah, we will try to shed some light upon this topic of bid'ah. Ke ye modu, ye jo bid'ah ka lafz hai, iska mana kya hai, iski asliyat kya hai. لوگ بار بار اس کو استعمال کیوں کرتے ہیں تو انشاءاللہ we will try to share some light upon this literally the word bid'a it comes from the root of bada'a which means to introduce or create something new which has no precedent before this is the linguistic meaning the literal meaning of it Ibn Hajar رحم الله تعالى in his Fatuh al-Bari he says al-bid'atu أَسْلُهُ أُحْدِثَ عَلَىٰ غَيْرِ مِثَالٍ سَابِقٍ That it is that thing which occurs, that new thing which does not have the like of it before. Now, where can you find this? کہ وہ چیز کرنا جو پہلے ثابت نہیں تھی Where can you find this in the Quran? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Baqarah verse 117 He says بَدِيعُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَإِذَا قَضَىٰ عَمْرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَقُولُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, He is the originator of the heavens and the earth. When He decrees something, He simply tells it to be and it is. It comes into existence. کہ اللہ تبارک و تعالی آسمانوں اور زمینوں کو ابتدا پیدا کرتا ہے اور جب وہ کسی چیز کا فیصلہ کرتا ہے تو وہ اسے کہتا ہے کہ ہو جا تو وہ ہو جاتی ہے it is as simple as that for Allah سبحانہ و تعالی تو اللہ تبارک و تعالی فرماتا ہے قرآن پاک میں کہ وہ چیزوں کو پیدا کرنے والا ہے ابتدائی حالت میں so the first thing that we mentioned within the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word bid'a, bada'a for himself. This is why one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-badi, the originator. The technical meaning of it, istalahi mana bid'at ka ye hai, and Imam al-Nabubi rahimallahu ta'ala in his tahzeeb al-asma wal-lughat, he says al-bid'atu hiya اہدافی ما لم یکن فی اہدی رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم It is to invent something that did not exist in the era of the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کوئی ایسی نئی چیز کا ابتدا کرنا جو نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے حیات زندگی کے دوران نہیں تھی So just from this you can just come to logical conclusions yourself what people are doing and when the word bid'ah is used are they doing those things which the Prophet ﷺ did or did not do? i.e. did the Prophet ﷺ say for example when the coronavirus was in its peak that certain brothers they came together to do start a new thing and this new thing was everybody get together and on that one night, every single person performed tahajjud salah at the same time and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove the coronavirus. This is what they came up with. And there's goodness within this because not every single person prays tahajjud every single night. 
ہر شخص ہر رات کو کوئی تہجد پڑھتا ہے اللہ تبارک و تعالی کے جو اولیاء ہے وہی پڑھتے ہوں گے باقی سب جو سوئے ہوں گے یا کام پہ ہوں گے انویشن Did the Prophet وسلم, not pray tahajjud? Did the Sahaba Ikram, radiyallahu anhum, did they not pray tahajjud? Kya unho ne tahajjud ki namaz nahi padhi? Ke tum keh rahe ho ke ye biddat hai, ye mat karo, koi haram kaam kar rahe hai. Ibn Rajab rahimallahu ta'ala, he says in his Jami' al-Uloom wal-Hikam, al-Muradu bil bid'ati, ما اخذ مما لا اصل له في الشريعه innovation is that invented matter that has no basis in the sharia ki wo nayi cheez hai jo shariat mein nahi hai namaz padhna shariat mein nahi hai is tahajjud not within the sharia praying salah is it not within the sharia I'm just using this as an example. You can extend it to everything that they say. Right? Your mates. Ibn Hajar rahimallahu ta'ala in his Fatuh al-Bari, Imam al-Shawkani in his Shara al-Muntaka, he mentions that there are two types of bid'ah. Two types of bid'ah. Ke bid'ah ke do aqsaam hai. Pehla aqsaam wo hai jisko hum kehte hai bid'atul hasana. And the other one is bid'atul sayyi'ah. So the first type is the praiseworthy innovation. And the other one is the blameworthy. So the first one is the one who gets the power. The second one is the one who gets the power. These are the early Imams doing it. Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali. Right? So they claim it to be Hanbali. So follow your Hanbali sheikhs and isn't it? No, don't come about 300 years ago and then try to punish every single thing that the ummah has been doing for the past 900 years before you guys came along you know the brother who used this example he's just walked in as well you know these people are like man, man city fans you know they're like man city fans late to the game got a bit of money arabs behind them and now they think they know everything about football with these guys they think they know everything about the deen and all the other teams that were there beforehand They know nothing about football. They have no history or anything. But they know everything. Right. So he mentions, both from Imam Shawkani, he mentions, and Ibn Hajar, he mentions, whatever can be classed under those commendable matters in the Sharia is praiseworthy. And everything which is classed as disliked or haram is reprehensible. کہ جو بھی شریعت کے اچھے اعمالوں میں شامل ہے وہ بدعت الحسنا ہے اور جو بھی شریعت کے برے اعمالوں میں شامل ہے وہ بدعت السیعہ ہے سو اینی تھنگ دیٹ یو ڈو وچ از ریکمینڈیڈ فار یو ٹو ڈو وچ از پریز ودی ود ان دا ریلیجن فار یو ٹو ڈو آئی ای یو نو از فرائیڈے سم بڈی سیز آئی وانٹ ٹو فاسٹ از ناٹ ordained for you to fast on a Friday it's a bid'ah for you to fast on a Saturday for you to fast on a Sunday the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would fast on Monday and Thursday now are we going to say to the people کہ تم جمعہ کے دن کو روزہ رکھتے ہو یا Saturday یا Sunday کو روزہ رکھتے ہو اب یہ بدت ہو گئی آپ گناہ کر رہے ہو یہ کہنا تو عقل کے خلاف ہے نا it doesn't go with intellect does it So as long as what you are doing does not go against the Sharia, there is no harm with you doing it. Now, there are many ahadith which we will go through one by one now. Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa, Umm al-Mu'minina, radiyallahu ta'ala anha, in the collection of Imam Muslim, she relates from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fahuwa rad. 
If someone invents in our religion something that does not belong to it, it is rejected. Wo kaam karna jo hamare deen mein se hai hi nahi, uska rad. That is what is rejected. Second hadith from Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala again. Collection of Imam Bukhari. Man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa fihi fahu warad. Similar wording. But the difference here is fihi and minhu. Which kind of changes it meaning. So in this one it says, if someone invents in our religion something that has no root in it is rejected. جس کی کوئی دین میں بنیاد ہی نہیں اس کا وہ رد کرتے ہیں تھرڈ حدیث فرام سید عائش صدیقہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ فرام دی کلیکشن آف امام مسلم من عملہ عملا لیسا علیہ امرنا فہو ورد اف سم ون پرفارمز ا پریکٹس دیٹ از ناٹ کمانڈڈ بائی ارس از ریجیکٹڈ ناؤ تھری ورڈز دیٹ یو نیڈ ٹو فوکس آن ہیئر ان دا میننگ آف ایٹ احدث ٹو انوینٹ And in the meaning of it, it comes as here to introduce a new practice, to legislate something new, i.e. to innovate. And there's people who say that that were, you know, man sanna, you know, they, that, that hadith, whoever introduces something new. Like they say, it does not have the view, meaning of innovate. They're lying. Just go and look at lanes. You know, he's a, he's a British lad, right? And he made the lanes dictionary. Even he knows it means introduce, right? So then they say it's restricted only to charity. No, that's because your, your mind is restricted to certain matters. The, the, the hukum that comes from it is arm, right? It's not specific to charity. Otherwise, charity was the norm. Why did the Prophet Sallallahu say that? But the Prophet Sallallahu what was he saying? He was saying anyone that introduces a new act. He was introducing the Sahabi at that moment He was introducing the act of charity. But he وسلم, did not say it is only specific to charity. Right? So don't pick and choose. <laughs> Ma laysa minhu means does not belong to it. Ma laysa fihi has no root in it. Now the second two, they clarified the first thing. So not every new matter is rejected. Har koi naya kaam mustar nahi hai. It is not rejected. Uska rad nahi hai. Only those new matters which are not part of the religion. Jo deen mein hai hi nahi, sirf uska rad hai. For example, milad koi karta hai aur us mein orte aur mard ek dousre ke saath baithe huye hai. This is haram. This is against the religion. This is an evil innovation. There's a gathering of milad or a gathering of praise, whatever religious gathering it is, men and women are sitting next to each other. Haram, forbidden. The jalous which is going along the streets and women are there amongst the men. Haram, forbidden. Women should not be walking the streets. They should not be at the jalous. Orto ka koi kaam nahi jalous mein shamil hona. Jalous hai kiska? Mardo ka. کس کی سنت پہ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی سنت پہ اپن ہوز ریکویسٹ کس کی طلب پہ سیدنا عمر ابن خطاب رضی اللہ عنہ کے طلب پہ سو ویئر آر ویمن کمنگ فرام نا دس از ہرا دس از اے ایول انویشن وچ مسٹ بی ریجیکٹڈ کمنگ ان ٹو دا ریلیجن ناؤ اینڈ ایڈنگ نیو تھنگز ود ان اٹ سچ ایز چینج ان دیز دی اذان ٹو انکلوڈ اگر خانز نیم ان اٹ Bid'ah, innovation, evil innovation. Saying to people, don't go to the masjid, pray in your own home, evil innovation. Right? And saying, you know, this is the problem with you Sunnis, you tell people to come to the masjid. Alhamdulillah, we say that. That will be a proof for us on the day of Qiyamah. We hope you will stand there on the day of Qiyamah and say in the court of Allah, they used to tell people to come to the masjid. That will be a proof for us, inshallah. And it will be a proof against these people who say, they say to people, go to the masjid and read salah. Ajeeb baat hai, bhai. Ye humare khilaf baate kar rahe hai, no jawano se, keh rahe hai, ke ye sunni jo hai, aapko kehte hai, ke masjid mein ja ke namaz paro. Thik hai, bhai. 
हम इसका इंकार कहा करते हैं हम बेशक यही कहते हैं वी डोट डिनाई दल्हमदुल्ला हम वो खारी ऑन से नॉट जस्ट फॉर जुमा प्लीज कम फॉर एवरी सिंगल सलाह वे हेयर फाइव टाइम एवरी सिंगल डे you know me or my natives my deputies when they turn up right the masjid is always open for fajr as well all year round we don't just open for fajr when it's time for ramadan all year round Jum- uh, fajr jamaat is here today there was only two of us right there shouldn't be two of us the amount of people that you get in the masjid for juma that is the amount of people that should be in the masjid for every single salah When Eid comes you have to do two jamaats. Where are these people for the rest of the year? At least it doesn't matter how busy you are every single day please try to get to the masjid for at least one salah. One salah this would be the protection of you. Coming to the masjid it builds a fort to get around you and protects you from the waswasas of the satan. Once you leave the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you're done for. Ask the youngsters that I've been working with. Ask them. When they come to the masjid, they feel safe, they feel secure. Slowly, slowly, when they start getting lazy, they don't come to the masjid. Imam Sahib, I don't feel it anymore. You know, I feel like my level's going down. Are you still doing the dhikr I gave you? You've stopped coming to the masjid. Obviously, you're going to fall off. This is your rehabilitation. Baar jate hai, din mein, पता पता नहीं कौन से काम करते हैं क्या चीजें देखते हैं मस्जिद में आके ये रिहेबिलिटेशन प्रोग्राम होता है इट क्लीन योर स्लेट इट री इग्नाइज दट फायर विद इन योर हार्ट यू नो ट्राई टू कम टू द मस्जिद रेगुलरली इन इन द हदीस ऑफ इब्न माजा द रसूल वसल्लम ही मेंशंस आल्सो रिकॉर्डेड इन द कलेक्शन ऑफ इमाम तिरमिजी द प्रोफेसर सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम सेड Whoever introduces an innovation, something new to the religion, by which Allah and His Messenger are not pleased, they are not pleased. Then upon him is a sin, and a sin of whosoever acts upon it, without it detracting from their sins in the slightest. Now, when I put this hadith a few months ago upon the internet on Twitter. Salafis have an absolute meltdown. You know these these Salafis, what they call they're not Salafis because they only came three hundred years ago. The Salafis, the first three generations, right? They follow Ibn Taymiyyah, Imam Ibn Kaim Al Jauziya. You know they came very later on, like you're talking seven hundreds, right? So what Salaf are you following? So they had an absolute hissy fit because I used the word innovate, and I deliberately used that word innovate. because their own website which uses the gradient of albani right sunna.com they use the word innovate and it was only after they had their full hissy fit that's when i disclose with the screenshot this is my word and this is your word from your website take it with them not with me obviously they didn't reply to that collection of imam bukhari and muslim allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Whoever innovates something which is not in harmony with the principles of our religion that thing is rejected Jo deen ke barabar nahi shariat ke barabar nahi usme shamar nahi uska rad hai In the collection of Imam Abu Dawood the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said If anyone practices any action in a way other than our practice it is rejected <coughs> ibn maja the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said amongst those in charge of you after i am gone will be men who extinguish the sunnah and follow innovation so what the innovation the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is speaking against is that which is against the sunnah that which you cannot find the practice of within the sunnah uska rad kiya gaya hai jo sunnat ke khilaf hai namaz padhna zikr karna roza rakhna nabi akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam ke qasidah padhna naat e sharif padhna kya ye sunnat mein shumar hai ya khilaf hai jawab do shumar hai na 
तो फिर वो कैसे कह सकते हैं ये जो काम आप कर रहे हैं ये हराम है और ये दो की आग में से काम के हैं हाउ कैन दे देन से ऑल दीज एक्शन डूर ऑफ अल्लाह सुबहान प्रेज इन दिसम रिसाइट इन कुरान गिव इन रिमाइंड इस्लाम प्रैक्टिस दे रिलीजन डू इन दसीद ऑफ द प्रोफिस How can they say these actions are against the Sunnah? Just use your intellect. You guys are being misled if you believe this. Straight up, they're misleading you straight to your face, and you cannot see it. In the collection of Imam Bukhari, after congregating all of the Muslims for Tarawih of twenty rakats. ये कब हुआ सैदना उमर इबना खत्ताब रदी अल्लाह अन के दौर में जब वो खलीफा थे अमीर उलमिन सैदना उमर इबन खताब उन्होंने तय किया कि तरावी की रकात बीस रकात हैं और ये उनके दो शयूक जो हैं मक्का और मदीना में वो भी वहां बीस रकात ही पढ़ते हैं यहां आके उन्होंने आठ रकात बना दी मे बी इस बिकॉज दे लिव ऑफ दे फ्रे ऑपोजिट के एफ सी and they get a bit hungry so they only do 8 rakats so they can pop over to kfc get a big you know mega bucket or whatever so they only pray 8 rakats but say na umar ibn khattab radiyallahu an he gathers them upon 20 rakats all of the sahaba say na ubay ibn kaab radiyallahu an he appoints him as the imam say na ubay bin kaab unko imam banaya sahaba ikram ka Upon doing this, Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu an, he said, "What an excellent bid'ah this is! What a excellent bid'ah this is!" In the collection of Imam Tirmidhi, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "And whoever introduces an erroneous innovation which Allah is not pleased with, nor is His messenger." then he shall receive the sins similar to whoever acts upon it ke agar aap kisi nayi cheez ki ibtida karoge aur wo shariat ke khilaf nahi to phir aapko uska ajr milega aur uske baad jo bhi wo amal karega aapko uska bhi ajr milega aur unko bhi uska ajr milega lekin agar wo bura kaam aap uska ibtida karo to jo bhi us tumhare baad उस पे अमल करेगा तो उसके गुनाह भी आपको मिलेंगे और तुम्हें भी गुनाह मिलेगा राइट सो यू डू समथिंग इंट्रोड्यूस समथिंग सो लेट मी गिव यू अ स्मॉल एग्जांपल ए ब्रदर स्टार्ट्स प्रीचिंग ऑन यूट्यूब ही इज द फर्स्ट वन टू डू इट एवरी सिंगल पर्सन कम्स आफ्टर हिम नाउ टू प्रीच द रिलीजन एवरीथिंग गुड दैट दे से दैट फर्स्ट ब्रदर विल रिसीव द रिवॉर्ड ऑफ इट ऑफ एवरी सिंगल वन हु डज इट आफ्टर इट Now, if somebody goes upon YouTube, starts doing daft things which are against the Sharia, and now other people come forward now and they start doing the same thing, he will receive the sin for it from every single person that does it. Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah taala, he says it is clear, based upon all of these hadith, it is clear that there are two types of bid'ah: the bid'ah mahmuda, which is the praiseworthy. and that is those actions which conform to the quran and sunnah and the bid'a madhmuma these are those things which go against the quran and sunnah imam al harari rahimallahu taala he states the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that every bid'a is a mid is a misguidance ai kullu bid'atin dalala wa kullu dalalatin fi nar that hadith he says that that hadith itself is am al makhsus i it is specific to the bid'ah madhmuma to the evil reprehensible innovations if it is not interpreted in this way it will clearly contradict the numerous ahadith that i've just related to you brief examples of bid'ah mahmuda the praiseworthy innovations abu bakr radiyallahu an He compiled the Quran after the passing of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, he 
establish the 20 rakats of Taraweeh prayer. Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an, he moved the maqam Ibrahim from the Kaaba to where it is now. In another narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did it himself. Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an, he changed the infrastructure of Masjid al-Nabawi Sharif sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina, Umar, Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan, he introduced the second adhan for Jum'ah to let people know the khutbah is about to begin. Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an, he got rid of all of the other dialects and he compiled the Quran upon one Qurayshi dialect. Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu an, he would perform two rakats prayer after every wudu he performed. <laughs> The action which caused his footsteps to be heard in Jannah. Yahya ibn Ma'mar al-Basri or Abu al-Aswad al-Du'ali, they were the first ones to add the dots to the letters of the Quran. Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, he put the short vowels on the Quranic script. Fatah al-Makasir. All innovation, but praiseworthy. So, in conclusion, for an innovation to be misguidance, it only has to have two conditions. If it has these two conditions, this bid'ah is an evil action. This new action is an evil action and you must stay away from it. Number one, there must be no origin within the religion for it. Number two, new things which negate the religion and contravene the Sharia. So if it falls, it meets these two conditions or one of them, then it is an evil innovation. It is misguidance and you must stay away from it. If it is not something which does not have an origin and if it is not something which negates or contravenes the Sharia, then it is not misguidance and it is perfectly permissible for you to do it. This will nicely take us on to our topic for next week, which will be the permissibility of Mawlid al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Very briefly, before we even go into next week, you can just establish this from yourself. Everything I've gave you today on innovation is anything that we do. I'm, on, I'm talking about us. I'm not talking about jahils who claim to be chuv chuv peers and they go and take a shoe and they say, my shoe is going to cure you. I'm not on about these people. I'm on about actual gatherings of praise, of knowledge of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala feeding and honoring your guests. Can you see anything which contravenes the Sharia within this? The answer is no. We'll go through this in detail next week, inshaAllah Ta'ala.